How many fluorines are there? Three. Okay, if it asks you bond angles, you can only do that if you have the loop structure. So we have to do that first. Valence electrons, the same concept for Lewis structure doesn't change. E equals 5 for phosphorus, and there's one of them. So one phosphorus at 5, and then there's 5 halogens in column 7. So that's going to be 40. Phosphorus in the middle. Fluorine, a fluorine, a fluorine, a chlorine, a chlorine. What I like to do is draw on the bonds first. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 of 40 total valence electrons. Okay? Uh, now, let's fill in the lone pairs on the terminal atoms. So I've got 10 of 40, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, uh, wait, 36, 38, 40. There we go. I think I got, I think I got it right. So notice I've used all my electrons. Um, everything has an octet. Phosphorus breaks the octet. Are we okay with that? Yeah, yeah because it's bigger than neon. <laughs> so anything down there will break the octet. I have an ex uh, expanded valence shell. We're fine with that. Uh, everything has a formal charge of zero. This is a really good structure. Uh, I didn't draw the shape. But there's five groups, I mean there's five single bonds, there's no lone pairs. So what do we call this? Trigonal bipyramidal. That means its shape looks essentially like this. Where there's a trigonal planar, and I have a trigonal planar with kind of linear stuck through it. I have uh, a structure of a trigonal bipyramidal if you want to take a look at it. So I'll pass this around. You can kind of see what I'm trying to draw. Okay, so in the middle goes the phosphorus. And I think they say in the problem this is nonpolar. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Okay. To make this nonpolar, I need to make it symmetric looking. Why don't, since there's three fluorines, let's put them in the positions that goes with the three. And there's two chlorines, we'll put it in the position that goes with two that are the same. Now the chlorine dipoles cancel, and the fluorine dipoles cancel. This is nonpolar as I've drawn it. Okay. Uh, then it wanted to know bond angles. Is that right? Okay. If you want to know the chlorine phosphorus chlorine bond angle, just look at it. It is 180. Is that okay, because this is on the linear part. If you want to know the fluorine phosphorus fluorine bond angle, that has to be 120 because it's on the trigonal planar part. If you want to know the fluorine, phosphorus, chlorine bond, that has to be 90. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. So these three fluorines are in the plane. They're kind of coming in and out of the board. And these the chlorines are in the plane of the board. Any other questions? Um, how do you know this almost like the formal charge. So what you do is you walk over to your arc table. Fluorine and chlorine both in column seven. So the way I do it, not necessarily the way everybody does it, but the way I do it, I count the points of intersections of things touching essentially the atom. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven things touching it. It's in column seven. It's even zero. Okay. Same for all of these. For the phosphorus, you walk over, it's in column 5, so you come back over here, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 things touching it, the 0. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Quick question, is the, um, the, as for the CLPCL um, bond angle, is that because it's a linear structure, so it's going to be 180? Yeah, okay. yeah, you just kind of so, look at it, oh so yeah, it's, so it's linear, it's, it's CL, linear. phosphorus. That is yeah. linear though? Yeah. That's linear? Okay. Well, uh, you wouldn't call right, I mean, it the shape linear, yeah, but, yeah, but I mean the, maybe the line point, is yeah. linear. That's kind of redundant, yeah. but yeah. yeah.